Hello everyone and welcome to episode 12 of Poe Bother, my chunk locked ultimate Iron Man. So as you can see, I've been uh, working on sand crabs and I got a couple chunk unlocks here. But before I get into things, there's a couple little uh, housekeeping things I want to note. The first is that I did do some further revisions to my item goals for the series. It was over 100 and I decided to uh, trim them back a bit and now there's 98 goals instead of 100 plus. And I added a new section called other goals, which are things I want to get for the series but don't give a chunk unlock because there are some things that just felt redundant to give chunk unlocks or like I was being a little too generous with the chunk unlocks from item goals. So I've reworked that and hopefully it's a little nicer now and also be a little easier to expand in the future because there will be more things that go in custom rooms or other storage that I will want to add there. So at least I have the now other goals section or even I could uh, add them to the unlock sections and get it back to around 100 because I like it being 25 for each of the tiers. The other thing is I did uh, update my uh, chunks on the world map. So if uh, I zoom out here, so the chunks I can unlock, I finally decided to shade uh, green. You know, I could have done this from the start. I just, I can't remember why I didn't. And also I did change the color of the red. So if it looks different, that's why. So what, uh, yeah, but since last episode, I did work on doing a bunch of diary tasks. I didn't complete any diaries, but I got closer into her closer and did all the tasks I currently had available in my chunks and with my requirements or levels. I also did uh, clean up my looting bag a good bit. Uh, got rid of some items in there, you know, used up runes, etc. And the other thing is I did go to uh, Flesh Crawlers, which got me a bunch of these herbs, as well as Dust Runes, which means I now can save an inventory space, though these will be a little harder to maintain than Air and uh, Earth Runes. And uh, the final thing was uh, Dust Crawlers also dropped Noted Iron Ore, which I made into a bunch of Iron Arrows, which brings me to my first of uh, the... Chunk unlocks I saved up, which is 60 fletching. The other one is 70 strength from here at uh, um, Sand Crabs. So, uh, yeah, now I'm ready to unlock a couple of chunks. But before I go unlock them, I actually want to talk a bit about my or what chunks I want because there's a lot of chunks that will be impactful in one way or another. Also, a lot that just don't do a lot till I get something else. So, the main chunks I'm after are South Rock here. It's amazing how much content is required in this little chunk. If I look here, just like all those quests need South Rock. So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of impactful. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to get that chunk eventually, at least. Maybe not right now. The other one is uh, North Taverly here, because this is needed for Druidic Ritual as well as Heroes Quest. Both are quests I would love to have access to, mainly Druidic Ritual so I can start on Herb Lore, since a lot of other quests need Herb Lore. The other chunk is uh, Camelot over here. Honestly, there's not that much, because uh, Merlin's Crystal needs uh, South Rock. So I can't do that yet, even if I got this one. But it would unlock the farming patch here. And also, it would really be nice just to Camelot teleport. Because anytime I need to get to this region, I have to teleport to Artie and walk or run over. Which is um, kind of annoying. And the final chunk I would really like to get is uh, the Nature Grotto here. Because this means I can do Nature Spear and attempt Fairy Tale 1. So uh, yeah, but those are the main chunks. There's a lot of other chunks that would be nice to get as well. But without further ado, let's roll the first junk for 60 fletching. And it is a very useless little corner up here. Uh, so I'm actually going to treat this chunk as a free unlock. Because while it does, is a connecting chunk, no matter which of these chunks you unlock first, the other one would already be unlockable because you only can get here from that. So it's just a little bit of coastline. And uh, yeah, so it doesn't really do much. It's honestly barely even a chunk worth unlocking, but it does have some... Uh, or, well, it has stuff on this side more so than this side. I don't know. Honestly, maybe I should have saved it to unlock that chunk as an adjacent one. But I unlocked it now, so yeah. And the second chunk for 70 strength is... Okay, this one is uh, notable. I need to double check how this works, but I'm pretty sure this carpet links to Narda. But I can't actually get down here because I don't have the bridge yet. So this one should be locked. But uh, yeah, it does mean I can now... Uh... I also think uh, soften him. Uh, is it this one or this one? Sorry, messing up the chunk unlocks there. There, I think it's supposed to be like that. I'll double check. But I think that one's also rollable because this carpet can go to Narda here and down here. So those are actually both very nice chunks to have unlocked. So, uh, yeah. But uh, now uh, there's a lot of goals I want to work on this episode. The first one actually is I want to get 35 runecrafting. I've been working at it through Tears of Guthix. And I would love to get uh, 35 to do What Lies Below. And I think I have a... Uh, Decent way to do that, as well as get the Chaos Talisman I need. So I'm going to see if I can uh, sort that out. And here is What Lies Below completed. 
So, uh, yeah, that is my 60th quest completed. Got a few rune crafting levels out of it, and now I get another chunk unlock. But I also was able to complete that easy clue, and I get... Huh. That's a really cool clue. I got the rainbow. Uh, I hope that's not a duplicate page. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Page one. So yeah, I got a second ancient page and two more rounds for the costume room. And I just realized that's doing a lot of pings. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So now I get to roll a chunk. And the next chunk is... Okay, just the wilderness chunk. I mean, that is the rev entrance, which could be notable someday. But uh, not planning to go to revs anytime soon. I don't know, maybe, but probably not. <laughs> also, one thing I have been debating is the Draymond staff. I think it's time just to drop it. Because I got, well, I planned to keep it forever when I got it the last time. But, um, I don't know. I just don't think it's worth the inventory space. I can't bag it. And, I mean, the Marks of Grace, they're really hard to get back if I get rid of them. Draymond staff really isn't that bad. I just death pile you know, go to Entrana and get another. So, until I get fairy rings, I can't justify keeping it on me all the time. And even when I get fairy rings, I'm honestly not sure if I'd want access to them all the time for all the things. So, I don't know. I think that for now, though, I would rather save the inventory spot and, uh, you know, do something like this just to free up my inventory a little more. So, uh, yeah, goodbye to the Draven staff. So I decided to come back to Sandcrabs to finish off getting 70 defense and 70 attack for another couple chunk unlocks. So uh, yeah, let's see what chunks I can get. Also, uh, just to mention, I have been messing around the chunk picker with the chunk tasks, maybe just to see how they'd work. They don't really go very well with my account. You know, I'm not doing the whole complete everything before rolling the next chunk thing. But I did want to see, mainly for like quest diaries and uh, stash units, if there were any I was missing, or just have see how the chunk picker would go about that. So if anything lags or works weirdly when I pick the chunk that might be why but the first chunk i get is uh okay yeah this one doesn't really do much right now uh and these chunks are not rollable because i cannot get there i mean i can get up there once i get through here but i currently need this chunk to be able to pass here because i'm pretty sure there's bushes there i'm 90 percent sure i checked on my main but now i can access up here where they have a few tortoises so that's what that chunk was for and the next chunk is Oh, into the Haunted Woods. Uh, I don't think there's anything I can do because this needs uh, the Ring of Karos, Charos, however you pronounce that. I don't think there's anything in particular in the swamp. There might be something for, like, leeches or, I don't know, something like that that might come up later. But, uh, yeah, I don't think either of these chunks do much right now. So over the past few weeks, I've been planning out a lot of the different goals for this account, you know, the different grinds I want to do, you know, how long it's going to take, which method I should go for, you know, what to prioritize first. And uh, while doing all that, um, I'm also a bit behind on editing videos. And while looking back at how this account was, you know, just like a few episodes back, it is kind of mind-boggling how far this account has come so far. And, uh, well, hopefully there's going to be a lot more to come. <laughs> but I don't know, just looking back to, say, like, five episodes ago at episode seven, you know, compared the, uh, from where I was there when I was just getting my void to where I'm now with the D-Spear and all these stats, it is a, it's a pretty big difference. But, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of goals I want to work on, and the one thing I do want to note is that a lot of these are going to be long grinds. You know, as I get to later in the game, especially on Ultimate Iron Man, things are going to slow down. So some of these grinds are like 9 hours, 31 hours, 60 hours. So as I'm going on these grinds, it might make it a little hard to record clips, and it also might make it a little harder to, like, focus on one thing. Because I might need to bounce between things, but I might not always explain what I'm doing. So if that does happen, sorry. But uh, yeah, I just want to have this uh, quick clip to kind of explain what grinds I want to work on now. So one of the first grinds I want to work on is farming. It's one of my lowest skills, and with Tithe Farm, I should be able to get it up reasonably fast. I think uh, the experience rates I get uh, until 50, or according to my notes, until 54 farming, it's 30k per hour, which is pretty good. And then I can get 70k per hour, which is very good. So it should be a pretty quick grind. And the reason I want to do this is because, well, Tithe Farm, not only... Uh, 
you know, will get my farming out for chunk unlocks. It also will get me the farmer's outfit, or ideally, uh, and that's another account or another chunk unlock through an account goal. And also, it lets me get the farming guild, which uh, is kind of relevant, as well as uh, letting me uh, farm herbs a bit better. So when I unlock herb lore, you know, that's going to be the best way I can get herbs for that. So that's one of the grinds I want to work on. The next one is cooking. Since I got my fishing up, cooking has been lagging behind. And with the mess hall, it should be a pretty quick grind to get to like 80 to match uh, fishing. So uh, I do want to work on that as well. Mainly so, you know, I can uh, cook, uh, where is it, sharks. So I can uh, hopefully start getting some good food on this account. Because I really don't have a good food source. So, you know, I haven't really had to do many bosses or such yet. But, you know, if I want to do more PVM, I need good food. And the other thing is fishing. While I do have pretty good fishing and I can, you know, catch sharks, uh, I really want to go for minnows because noted fish is, well, I don't think I need to explain. That's very good on an account with limited inventory space. So I'm not sure uh, when I'll be doing that, but it's something I want to work on. Also, I did manage to complete an easy clue and also got a medium cask as well. So the easy clue is nothing special. And as for the medium clue, another thing I did want to know is that I have been doing some clue math. Uh, my chance of completing a hard clue is pretty slim, so I don't think it's worth trying to grind hard clues for the magic short bow anytime soon. Medium clues is a bit more reasonable though, so I might try and go for a, a boot grind. But as for this clue, well, we have the ping from the fire lighters, I think, but uh, yeah, I don't know, not much. At least I uh, have, oh, battle staff. I can use it to act the other stuff. But yeah, so I think that's what I'll be working on. I'm going to either start with cooking or uh, farming, probably. And hopefully I can get them to their desired levels. So I know this isn't farming or cooking like I said I'd be working on, but I can explain. So pretty much another goal I had on my list was working on aerial fishing for a few reasons. One, there are some item goals here. I actually changed them a fair bit since the start of the series. Originally, I think I had each of the pearl rods as a separate item goal, then I made them all one item goal, but then I cut it back to just the normal pearl rod, because honestly, I don't really need a pearl fly fishing rod, because I probably won't be fly fishing anymore, or at least, you know, it's only for training, so it's not something I'll actively need to use, and the barbarian rod you can claim for free under the bed, so it's not that big of a deal to store it in the playground house. So, uh, yeah, only the pearl rod is an item goal now. But aside from that item goal, it turns out this is actually like the best way I have to train Hunter right now, or at least one of the better ways to train Hunter, because I don't have access to box traps and I don't have access to any salamanders, or because I don't have the desert chunks or the swamp chunks and I can't catch the red ones yet. So I decided to come here and train, or actually I did start doing cooking, but then I decided to come here and train because this will give me not only some cooking experience, as you can see, I actually have been training cooking, but also fishing experience. And after completing my grind here, I got up to 81 fishing, 66 cooking, granted I got some of that from the mess hall first, and up to 65 hunter, which means I do get another chunk unlock for 60 hunter as well. And to show you how much I got, I was only planning to stay here for 100 pearls, but uh, I got a little lucky. Not only did I get one Golden Tench, I got two. And because I can't store multiple Golden Tenches as an Ultimate Iron Man, that means I have to cash them out. So I end up staying for another 50 Pearls. So, uh, yeah, if I use this here, I should be able to trade this in and get 100 Pearls. There we go. Yes. So I traded in one Golden Tench, and now if we trade him, I can purchase the Pearl Rod for an item goal. And also the Barbarian Rod. Like I said, it's not a big deal to have the Barbarian Rod, but I probably will be going back to Barbarian Fishing in the future to at least train to 82. And if I don't have any other items in my inventory I can equip, this would technically save one inventory space. Also, it's kind of a flex. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad I didn't get any more tenches during the grind, because if I did, that means I'd have to, or would consider going for the fish sack now, or at least have to stay longer and get the fly fishing rod just so I could use up the pearls. But uh, yeah, I don't know, it wasn't that bad of a grind, and it definitely did help a lot with Hunter. So yeah, two chunk unlocks, actually, let me just update. So I have one chunk unlock for 60 Hunter, and one for the fishing rod. So 60 Hunter gets me, yes, that is so awesome. So... One thing I actually have been doing, if uh, we uh, hop back over here for a second. So for a while now, I have been lamping Slayer under this exact, er, for this exact outcome. So I currently have a lizard task, 
but I don't have the chunks that have lizards, at least that I'm aware of. I have checked the desert, and I'm pretty sure they're only in the chunks I don't have. But if you scroll down here, at 44, uh, yeah, sulfur lizards. I can kill sulfur lizards at Mount Karom. The problem is, I can't even boost from, because you have to equip the boots of stone to uh, get in the dungeon to fight them. So, I need to get 44 Slayer, and then I'll be able to train Slayer again, now that I have this chunk. Also does mean I have Konar, but I don't think I should be using Konar anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, and there are some ways I could actually speed up Slayer. Like, there are some mini-quests, or diaries even, I could put the lamps into, if I can complete them. I'm just not sure if it's really wise in the long term to do that over putting them in herb lore. But now that I actually could start training Slayer again, I think it might be worth uh, trying to get the 44 Slayer to see if I can actually, you know, do my task. So the next chunk unlock for uh, the Pearl Rod is... I think this might actually be notable. I don't know what other quests are needed, but I have to look into what chunks this unlocks. I mean, of course it unlocks the farm up here as a possible chunk. And there's actually a boat here to sleep. I think I completely forgot about that. But uh, I think that does mean I uh, rolled, or this should be an unlockable chunk. Oh, no, I'll double check on all this, but uh, yeah, uh, definitely an interesting chunk. Uh, also does mean I technically can train prayer at the Ectofungus, so I don't think I'll be uh, doing that, especially because I haven't completed the quest, so it costs me to go in and out. But uh, I don't know, definitely an interesting chunk. I know it's a rum deal here, and I don't know. Yeah, I think I could technically do the quest, but I think it needs Zogar Flush Eaters and some other stuff, so I can't. But I think I have the chunks I need for it so I'd have to look a bit more into all this but uh I think now what I'm going to do is actually head back to cooking to see if I can get 80 cooking maybe I'll also try and do farming I don't know pretty much I just wanted something a little more chill and uh farming is a little I don't know I'm not a huge fan of tight farm it can be a little stressful and just requires a lot of attention so uh yeah but I don't know I finished the aerial fishing grind I probably won't come back here then again, I said that after I got the fish sack on my main, so we'll see. But, uh, yeah, I'll have to train something else now. Well, I've been slowly chipping away at Tithe Farm, and while I'm still a fair bit off my farming goal, I did hit a notable milestone. I'm now 1,400 total. So between the farming levels I've been getting and the runecrafting level I got off Tears of Guthix just now, uh, yeah, that was enough to get 1,400 total, which means I had a total of three chunk unlocks, one for 50 farming, one for 40 runecrafting, and then a, you know, a selection chunk unlock for 1,400 total. But as a quick update of where things are with Tithe Farm, I actually did spend my reward points uh, recently. It actually was just enough, and I got myself a Gricola can. Now, the reason I got this one as my first reward, I think I did put in the other uh, unlock section, which means it doesn't count as a chunk unlock, but it's still a goal I wanted. And that's because it's really a pain to do Tithe Farmer on UIM, because every time I want to come here, I need to empty out my inventory and buy a bunch of watering cans. And, you know, it can also just be annoying to get coins when I also want to store away my coins for inventory space. So now I just have this one watering can that I can store in the tool leprechaun. And it has, uh, let me see, I think it's like, yeah, it's, well, so it's 1% or 100%, but I think it's like a 1,000 charges and I can just fill it up at any water source. So this is a really nice upgrade for UIM, mainly just for Tithe Farm, but it will uh, be a... The nice little quality of life for working at Tithe Farm in the future. So, uh, yeah. And hopefully that will, uh, I don't know, make the grind a little more bearable. Because it's not that bad. It's just still not my favorite content. But I do plan to hopefully uh, tough it out and get to my target level. And hopefully be able to pick up the farmer's outfit as well. As for the chunk unlocks. So for uh, 50 farming, I get, oh, the Slayer Tower. That seems like a pretty good one. Uh, I mean, I know it has all the Slayer monsters. It is one of the ones that I really wanted before I got back to Slayer, because there's a high chance that I do get assigned something in here, and I just couldn't kill, like, Crawling Hands or even Banshees. I mean, I guess those are, or Banshees are in the Catacombs, but, like, Infernal Mages. I think they're only in the Slayer Tower here. So now that I have it, uh, yeah, it's gonna be very helpful in the future and just make it a lot easier to access Slayer monsters. So, for, uh, 40 Runecraft, I get... The Graveyard of Shadows. I don't think there's that much here that I'd be using, but it is a nice chunk to have, because if I ever do wilderness content, it now means I have uh, north of Ferox, so it makes it a little easier. I can actually run up here now. Yeah, I think that's the only connected one that's that I actually have in the past to uh, do a little corner side step while going to recharge my Ring of Wealth. I don't consider it cheating. I still wasn't working out of my chunks. But, uh, so yeah, that's not a bad one either, at least for finishing off the wilderness and connecting the regions a bit better. And now for the roll to pick one. 
Okay. Oh, that's a hard one. Because I really want to go in this direction, but this chunk in specific doesn't really offer much of I'm right. Like, it gets me close to the Relica Slayer Cave and closer to Keldegrim, while this chunk... Okay, this chunk has Ogre Flesh Eaters, and uh, I actually thought it was the last chunk I needed. Oh, it is the last chunk I needed. That is Jigig. So it would be the last chunk I need for Zogre Flesh Eaters, but Zogre Flesh Eaters need Herb Lore. So until I have that, this chunk really doesn't do anything for me. So I think I will be picking this one up here, just because it gets me closer to uh, stuff I need. Because the Relic of Slayer Cave uh, here is another uh, chunk that just has a lot of monsters I can't find elsewhere that could block me for Slayer. So being a chunk closer to that will be very helpful. Well, it's been a couple months since the last clip, and I haven't been playing on here as much since I've been uh, playing on my main in preparation for the new raid and then playing the new raid. But uh, recently I've had some more time to AFK, so I've been uh, working on some of my grinds on here since, well, some of them are a bit more AFK than stuff on my main. So the first thing to note is it's pretty obvious from where I am, but uh, yeah, I've been working on the cooking grind, and with this I will get... 80 cooking so I can finally cook sharks which means uh well I'm one fishing level off but now I can go to minnows and start stacking up minnows and actually cook them which is going to be really exciting because now I have a really good source of food aside from that I have just been uh, doing tears of guthics in the background and got rune crafting and slayer levels this will eventually get me to 44 slayer uh just might take a few more weeks but uh that is one way I can uh, get the slayer level wasn't the way I planned but it is one way and, uh, yeah, so aside from that, I should have a couple more chunk unlocks, one for 70 cooking and one for 80 cooking. And, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure what I'm going to get to after this, but, uh, the chunk unlocks might change a bit. Also, uh, if I'm missing anything, yeah, it's been a couple weeks since I, or a couple months since I've done this, and, uh, okay. I don't think this changed much, I think this one's now rollable, but, uh, yeah. Uh, actually, is this one needed for getting ahead? No, it's this chunk down here. So really not that useful. And for 80 cooking, we get... Well, those are not very useful chunk unlocks at all. So yeah, I need to consider what I want to work on next. I might actually just go AFK fishing and start AFKing minnows. But I'm not sure what I'm going to be working on to get the next unlock right now. So I did end up getting 82 fishing and then going over to minnows. And if you check here in the looting bag, I now have 2.6k sharks. I meant to stop at 2.5k, but I just kind of kept AFKing a bit while editing some videos. So yeah, I definitely will be fishing more sharks in the future. But I feel like the 2.6k will hopefully last me a decent bit. Aside from that, I also remembered I can train runecrafting by doing the Archaeus Library. So I just got this to 44, so now the experience from Tears of Guthix should always go on to Slayer, at least until I get 44. So uh, yeah, only at least one week or less to go until I'll have 44 Slayer so I can uh, finally get back to training it normally. Aside from that, I did also make uh, one small change to my chunk map. I'm only noting it because the number of chunks I've unlocked has changed. That's because uh, I got rid of a lot of these water chunks I previously did as a free unlock. Because the reason I uh, do water chunks like, you know, say this one or this one as a free unlock, just so the map looks nicer for one. Like, you know, if this was just a, uh, you know, run it out like this, it just doesn't look nearly as nice considering that's a chunk I just could never unlock otherwise. But having it like this just makes the map look nicer and also means that when I'm walking next to the land I do have unlocked, it's not just a grayed out square. But I decided some of these like out here, you know, you've could see them flying like the dock here but I decided it really wasn't that big of a deal so just to make my accurate or the numbers I actually have on you know the chunk picker here more reflective of what I actually unlocked I uh, went around then removed a lot of the water chunks that just didn't seem that important to have for now I don't know I might always go back and change my mind in the future but uh yeah that's what I decided for now but aside from that, I did also uh, stack up a few medium clue caskets and I actually went to uh, Bandits by Shazian because they drop herbs. So I was able to stack up a bit more herbs as well, which is uh, pretty nice. Hopefully it will help if I can ever unlock herb lore. But uh, I don't know, pretty much I was hoping to get another chunk unlock for this episode, but there wasn't any grinds I really wanted to commit to because it's a bit later in the episode. And uh, yeah, so let's see if I can get anything notable from the clues. I mean, there is always a chance that I get something, you know, really special like Ranger Boots or... 
Nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh well. It's bound to happen, but I still was hoping for a blessing or clue or boots or something, but I don't know. Maybe next episode. So, uh, yeah. But that's ten medium clues now, and a good bit of progress this episode. I didn't do as much tithe farm as I wanted, mainly because I just don't want to do a lot of tithe farm right now. But there's a lot of other grinds I want to work towards in the next episode, so uh, you'll just have to wait to see what those are uh, till then. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this episode. Until next time, goodbye.